Here's another comprehensive battery bank charging test from Basis with bi-directional Type-C port for charging and discharging. It remains cool during the whole charging process. More details later in this video. I have my test results here. We're gonna go over these numbers I collected. See its charging efficiency. Pretty good and consistent with the previous MagSafe battery banks I've tested so far. Here we go. The magnetic connection is very strong. It's unlikely to shake it off under normal use. In this test, I'm using a very heavy iPhone 14 Pro Max with a case. After fully draining the battery pack, it took 2 hours and 54 minutes to fully recharge. The peak power input was 20 watts. The iPhone 13 shuts off at 2%. That's when I attached the basis MagSafe battery bank to it. It took 2 hours and 28 minutes to bring the iPhone battery to 100%, adding 98% of battery to the iPhone. The basis power bank shuts off automatically after the iPhone is full. With one press of the power button, it shows two bars left. There goes my second charging test. I drained my iPhone down to 2% again. The remaining juice in the MagSafe battery bank was able to bring the iPhone to 86% in two hours and 35 minutes. There are some other key facts I wanna mention. You can use this power bank as an emergency power source to any modern laptops that, that supports power delivery. We can see here, it's charging the MacBook Pro at 19.4 watts at 12 volts, 1.6 amps. So it will slowly charge the MacBook Pro, no problem. It recharges at 20 watts. As, as we already seen in the um, time lapse. It also works in the um, charge in this um, pass through charging mode. When it's getting recharged, it will charge the phone as well. And the power consumption is around 20 watts, slightly reduced, but the battery is pretty full right now. So not bad at all. It's actually taking in 16 watts. Third, Android users can also enjoy this device by attaching this kind of ring adapter available on Amazon to the back of your case, to your Android phone case, to make it um, MagSafe compatible so you can enjoy the whole MagSafe accessory lineup designed for Apple devices. Here's another question I'm getting asked a lot, the power on off switch one press to power it on and we'll start charging a double click seems to power it off and it will stop charging when charging the iphone it will output 7.5 watts and it can charge the other device at the same time using its wired connection outputting 10 watts as you can see here, both devices are charging right now. Although slowly, it is charging on my MacBook Pro 16 inch. It is also charging on my iPhone. 10 watts, five watts. When this cable is disconnected, it's going to be outputting 7.5 watts to the iPhone. If you're using Android device, you may be able to get 15 watts, but I don't have an Android phone for this test. And it also works in portrait or horizontal landscape mode. Here's a thermal imaging camera view after it's been charging my iPhone 14 for about 30 minutes. We can see the maximum temperature is around 111 degrees Fahrenheit. My room temperature is around 74 degrees Fahrenheit. It's barely warm here in this area. Did 
disconnect. We can clearly see the rain a circuit inside the IFO around 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's take a look at the test result. The iPhone 13 battery capacity is rated at 12.4 watt hour and I have 93% of its de originally designed capacity left. That gives us 11.53 watt hour uh, in this built-in battery bank. The basis MagSafe battery bank is rated at 10,000 milliamps, that is 37 watt hour. Keep in mind the 20 watts here refers to the output from its USB type C output and input. So it's, it can char recharge at 20 watts and discharge at 20 watts. The iPhone gained 98% in my first charging test and in my second charging test it gained 84%. That is 1.8 times of charge put in 20.98 watt hour capacity, uh, which gives us 20.98 uh, watt hour divided by 37 watt hour here. So that's the capacity I gained in the iPhone here as a total, divided by the total capacity of the battery bank. That is 56.7%. That's the charging uh, conversion rate of its or its efficiency. So that's more than half of its um, rated total capacity, which doesn't look much, but this is done in the wireless charging mode. Normally, uh, across all devices I've tested, it's always like this, including the 10,000 milliamps um, with the kickstand or the 5,000 milliamps uh, version, which is about, um, you know, slightly smaller. So I think this is a fantastic uh, product for its size. The conversion rate will increase if you use the wired mode. You can totally use a lightning uh, to USB-C cable to get the max out of it, or in the um, event that you need to charge your laptop, the conversion rate will be around 74% based on my previous charge, um, you know, the same battery chemistry. This is the uh, 10,000 milliamps with a kickstand, the same. So I did not do that test here, but I trust these are the same because the wireless charging efficiency rate is the same. And the design is simpler. Obviously it is um, um, more of a base model of this type of battery bank. It is thicker, but it is sh also shorter. Does not feature a kickstand. And it is uh, more cost effective than the uh, 5,000 milliamps. It is barely, uh, you know, it is a slightly larger, but not like uh, unacceptably larger, considering it's not even like uh, double the size of the it doubled the capacity of this version, uh, 5,000 milliamps, but it, you know, the size doesn't really um, get doubled. So this is a great deal. Yeah, very simple design, um, good texture, and also performs the same. This is actually better than average than what I have tested. All right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you find this review helpful.